So some of my students from the Patreon have mentioned that as good as inspiration can be, they've fallen into the trap of just copying another artist's chord progressions or sound as a whole. How do you go about creating your own inspiration, designing chords and melodies, especially when you have limited music theory, so you can develop your own identity as an artist? Let's dive into it. Okay, so you've seen the title of this video. We wanna generate our own sound as an artist, but our first objective is gonna to be to create a chord progression. I wanna do this from a blank project and do it in real time with you because I don't think I do that enough on this channel. So what I've got set up is just a project in 120. I'm gonna loop four bars for now. And I've just got the electric piano set up here in MIDI track one. We're gonna right click and insert a MIDI line. And here's a really easy rule to get started in creating your own chord progression. One of the first things that I'm gonna do is get Ableton to help me. So over here on the left hand side, we have scale. And I'm actually gonna choose the scale of F. And the reason I'm gonna choose F is when you put it into the lower octaves, it has such a wonderful resonance for both small speakers and large monitors. Meaning that when you record a bass line and the root note might be F, it's gonna translate really, really well. You're gonna to have to do less work to get it to be audible. So let's do F and I like the idea of minor. Now our chord progression is gonna be made up of major and minor chords, but let's just start with a basic melody. These are gonna be legato notes. We may as well start with F. We're just gonna stretch that out. And then what I wanna do is just use my ear to feel out a basic melody. We're gonna use these purple lines to make sure that we stay in the right key. So what we're gonna do is just have our melody jump down an extra step. We're gonna miss this purple line here. And then maybe another step here. Let's just see what that sounds like. And in my head, I can hear it going back up again. So let's just go up one step. The next thing that I wanna do is start to create a chord. And a really great rule to remember is if we highlight all of those root notes and just go up seven spaces, you'll start to create a chord and it's all in keeping with the scale that we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice how all the notes are landing on a purple region. So now what I wanna do is create a mixture of major and minor chords so that I get a nice looping feel. To do this, all you wanna do is pitch up your bottom note three or four steps. One, two, three, four. Can't actually go here, can it? Because this is not in keeping with the scale. So we're gonna keep this on three steps. Let's go with the next note. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's in keeping. Next note, one, two, three. That's very in keeping. One, two, three. We're gonna keep it like that. Something that you can do to make your chords sound a little bit bigger and a little bit more jazzy is take these middle notes and copy those up seven spaces as well. This is sounding a little bit higher for my taste. What I'm gonna do is select all the notes and then shift down and pitch them down an octave. What I like to do to create a top line melody is take some of these middle notes seemingly at random and just pitch them up an octave. So this is gonna be on the A flat three here. We could go higher if we wanted to. So that sounds good. What we wanna do is change that top line melody a little bit so we have a nice eight bar loop. So we're gonna copy that up twice, Command J to join it, and we'll extend this loop. And let's just create a pattern out of these notes. We want it to be in keeping with these purple lines still, but we can start to change that pattern for a top line melody. I think it's gonna stay on that first note there, and then maybe build higher. That could work well, but what could also be nice is if we create a little bit of tension by staying on the same chord. So let's see what that sounds like. So what we're gonna do for now, because we're gonna save this as a top line, is just press zero. We don't want it to become too monotonous while we're building our own sound. Let's duplicate this track, because what we wanna do is create a bass line. So to create a bass line, all we're gonna do is take all of the notes, shift down to pitch it down one octave, and then we're gonna delete everything that falls above that bottom line. You can change this to maybe an operator bass or just a standard operator instrument. 
Now what we want to do is start changing the sound so we have something that's a little bit more unique. The first thing that I'm gonna do is duplicate that first main instrument because we always wanna go back to the original and have a copy of our chord progression. So with this, I'm just gonna change it to uh, a piano. We're gonna use the Decent Sampler, it's a free instrument. And this is actually a trick that I utilized in the Counts video. So make sure you go back and check that out. And it's just to use filter sweeping to create a new kind of pattern and a new rhythm for our sound. Make this chord progression fill up a wider frequency spectrum and the only way to do that is to copy all the notes. We're starting on F and go up to the next F here. It's gonna sound like this. And we could use EQ automation, but it's gonna take a little bit of time. And what's really exciting is Cable Guys just released Shaper Box 3. And I really wanna do some experimentation in this video alongside you guys. I think what we're gonna do first is some filter automation. So let's use the filter and we just wanna draw a unique shape. One of the new shaper tools that they've added is liquid, jet plane flanging, thick lush phasing, robotic comb effects. Let's add a rhythm from their presets here. That's already super cool. I think that's giving it a really unique tone. All I want to do is just bring down some of that click noise and filter it a little bit differently. So let's put the filter on the other side. I really like that. We're gonna come back to Shaper Box in this video. They've added some other tools that are super cool as well. Maybe we want something more legato that adds some air to the mix. So what we're gonna do is use that decent sampler again, Shaper Box, we can get rid of those two Shaper tools, just add volume and we'll do it for a bar and just have the sound rise up over time. What we can do from here is send it to return A where we have a reverb. We're just gonna extend the decay a little bit and turn off the high cut. We can roll off that low cut a little bit more. I'm also just gonna add the shifter here, which is set to 12 semitones and a window of 167 milliseconds. And we could just make that a little bit more airy by adding the EQ8. If you want to, you can even add an echo and take it out of sync. I think what we can do with this return is add a little bit of a sidechain. We're already on a Shaper Box 3 kick today. So let's add sidechain and set that to quarter notes. And let's do some cool filter stuff with this now. Okay, so what you're seeing here is me just trying to spread that sound as wide as possible, which is why I've pitched up that second piano and added a new filter shape as if it's a response to that first instrument that we heard. And that's why I'm gonna automate the volume automation to essentially be off and then on. And here's our first pattern. Some people have been asking for an Odessa tutorial and I think YouTube is just packed full of really handy tutorials, but they haven't done anything that's quite covered like this. So let's open Serum and create a patch. We're just gonna drag that onto our first line of MIDI that we had before. We don't quite want that. So we're gonna turn up the unison and just detune this slightly between like seven and 10. Such a wider sound, right? And we're gonna use envelope one and draw that to the cutoff and then turn that cutoff down. And what we wanna do is draw a little pattern that's a little bit like a pluck. And let's turn that filter on. I think I want it to be a little bit brighter, so we're gonna add oscillator A. It's gonna be an octave up, and we're gonna turn the level way down. All we're gonna do with Shaper Box 3 is set this to a sine wave and then change our sync from bar to hertz. And now we can automate this rhythm. We just wanna draw that in and we have to Kind of use our ear a little bit. I think I'm gonna draw this up to about 60. And then at the halfway mark, take it to about 40. And then I can duplicate that pattern. Sounds really nice to me. It's fairly quiet in the mix and it needs a little bit more character. So we're gonna open up Shaper Box once again. I want it to get wider, so we're gonna add the width shaper here and we're just gonna draw this up. So it goes from a central place to a wider place at the end of the chord. And I want it to have a little bit more drive, so we're gonna increase that drive as well. 
I think that's sounding fantastic. The only other thing we could do is add a little bit of noise to that sound. So we're just gonna increase the noise here and do the same thing. Another thing that's been added to Shaper Box 3 is the compressor. We're gonna add the compressor and pull the threshold all the way down. So we're really squashing the sound of that kind of Odessa pad. Let me just pause where we're at in the video to tell you about today's sponsor, which is of course DistroKid. I use DistroKid service for all of my releases and I think they do a phenomenal job of getting your music on over 200 stores and platforms. But one thing that's really brilliant is their Spotify Canvas Generator. Halloween season is upon us and you might have seen my last episode where we created some spooky lo-fi for Halloween playlists. And why not pair that with a spooky Spotify Canvas as well? Just head to the generator, type in your keyword and then pick the visual that fits the theme of your track. If you want to join me on DistroKid, then just use the affiliate link in the description below and you'll get 7% off your first year. Let's jump back into it. Let's do one more just for fun. We're going to grab a drum groove. I'm going to throw it into this audio track here and duplicate it up. With this, we're going to add a spectral resonator and we're going to take the chords hitting mode MIDI from our first instrument. I'm going to set this to poly and now our spectral resonator drum pattern goes from sounding like this to this. I think this is sounding really cool, really unique, but what I wanna do is add another unique tool from Shaperbox. We're just gonna choose a preset this time. So I'm gonna go into initial, maybe rhythmic chop and gate, and then we'll just choose something from the top, double click, and we've got these tools here. It sounds like this. That sounds super cool. It's a little bit noisy for my taste, so I'm gonna bring that noise level down a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do, which is really impressive, is just have it analyze the audio transients. All you have to do is click this audio button. The Shaper restarts every time an audio transient is detected. There's some lovely ear candy here, but I just wanna add a filter in a couple of places to help us get through the bar. Let's add a tiny little bit of reverb to this sound. So from here, what do you do about a top line melody? We have other options. Let's copy this down one more time. Let's zero everything off and bring back this top line melody. What we can do is just choose a unique rhythm by using the arpeggiator. It's in a MIDI effects. We're gonna assign that to our line here. We're gonna use the operator on a kind of a pluck sound. Let's change the rate to maybe 16th and change the groove to like a swing 16th. a cool pattern in itself but we could use the full chords as well to give a different kind of melodic groove. Okay so we've pretty much used the same chord progression all the way through. We've utilized different effects and that's given us different rhythms, different melodies, chords and even a bass line. Let's put everything together with some drums, some noise and effects and just kind of spread out this arrangement a little bit to see what kind of narrative we've created. different from this example to what you heard in the intro. In the intro, I assigned some of those melodic instruments to a group and sidechained that group for better mixing so you could hear the kicks and snares and other percussive details. So there we have it guys, hopefully some tips and tricks in this video to help you develop your own identity as an artist. If it was helpful, please do like and subscribe as it greatly helps out the channel and we're almost 20,000 subscribers, how exciting. What's also exciting is we have a beat battle going down over on the Discord this weekend and you still have plenty of time to get involved. And it's sponsored by Ample Sound and Cable Guy. If you win, you'll be able to choose from an Ample Sound guitar and you'll get a license to Shaper Box 3. All the other details are at the Discord and you can find that in the description below. I hope to see you there and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>